homegrown extremism. Lone wolves or wolf dens? I'm Joseph Axe, I'm a correspondent with Reuters. We've all heard the term lone wolf to describe extremists that are accused of plotting attacks against the United States. But a Reuters analysis shows that in fact the vast majority of defendants who have been accused by the United States of plotting on behalf of Islamic State are in fact members of groups, anywhere from two to more than ten people of like-minded individuals who got together in person to discuss their plots, whether it was to travel abroad and become a fighter for Islamic State or to, to, to carry out attacks here at home. That term implies someone who's completely isolated, radicalized online and, and sets out to attack all on his own. In fact, true lone wolves are very rare uh, and some of the experts that uh, Reuters spoke to said that the, the, the true lone wolf, someone who acts completely on their own without any plotting on behalf of, uh, without, without working with any co-conspirators, are, are really psychotics. And you just don't see a lot of people like that. The relationship between uh, these defendants or these people accused of, of plotting against the United States, um, they run the gamut from uh, casual acquaintances to married couples, like the couple in San Bernardino in December. They're meeting with uh, friends, family members, uh, classmates, roommates, and discussing what they want to do on behalf of Islamic State. And experts in radicalization say that that type of in-person meeting can actually work even more to make people extreme, can exacerbate uh, jihadist tendencies and, and push those individuals more towards violence.